Stan Gibalisco here. Uh, I would just like to describe for you um, three different ways to build a signal mixer circuit of the sort that you might use in a direct conversion receiver. The first circuit I'd like to show you comes from my book Electronics Demystified 2nd Edition. It's figure 5-9 uh, which is, this is called a single balanced mixer. Your local oscillator signal goes in here. Your received signal, that would be the antenna, or coming out of the, um, <coughs> not the antenna, I'm sorry, the uh, radio frequency amplifier in the front end of the direct conversion receiver. A radio frequency choke to keep this signal from getting uh, to ground instead of to where you want it to go, which is to the output. Uh, that is a simple way to mix signals, is to use diodes because they have a non-linear characteristic and that encourages mixing products in a signal. There's a, there's a better way, though, to do this because some of the um, received signal may leak through to the output in some mixers. This circuit should work fine for a direct conversion receiver but not so not so much for a super heterodyne where you do not want this local oscillator signal or this received signal to leak through to the output it doesn't matter in a direct conversion receiver because the output is audio frequency so much different that you wouldn't uh, hear the radio frequency energy anyway but this type of arrangement is more efficient as well so you you might prefer to use this as a uh, <clears throat> mixer circuit in a direct conversion receiver again this is where your signal comes from your radio frequency amplifier the mixing diodes are here note that that looks very much like a bridge rectifier circuit and this right here looks very much uh, like a uh, half wave or, f or full wave uh, well, it looks sort of like a rectifier circuit, except one of the diodes is pointing the wrong way. But the the basic idea here is to cause nonlinearity, which encourages mixing between this local oscillator signal and your received signal. In, in a direct conversion receiver, both of these signals are... Uh, in the example I used in the previous video just uh, earlier today about this subject direct conversion receivers and how they work uh, these are were seven megahertz signals whereas the output is going to be at audio frequencies but there's even a better way yet <clears throat> to do all of this and that is to use an amplitude modulator instead here is your uh, carrier input and you can in effect literally modulate that with your local oscillator signal which you put in place of this audio input here so that your carrier input is where which comes from your uh, from your radio frequency preamplifier that is your your CW signal your carrier which then you modulate with the local oscillator signal and you end up with an AM signal at the output and that gives you, in effect, the audio that you're looking for. Uh, and uh, that that's really a, a sort of a weird way to get amplitude modulation. It's sort of an inside-out way. But it is another way to make this work. And you can actually, in fact, bias this transistor in class B in order to cause more nonlinearity in the circuit and thereby encourage the mixing even more. This capacitor would have to be tailored for audio frequencies rather than radio frequencies. So it's kind of a mod a modified amplitude modulator circuit. So you can pick any one of these three and build your direct conversion receiver that way. That sounds like kind of a cool project for me to do. Maybe sometime I'll make a build a receiver like that and uh, take it out into the boondocks with me somewhere and make a whole series of videos about that. Uh, and run it off of batteries, no human-made noise, just about 
The only noise I'd hear would come from cosmic objects like this. Exploding stars. <laughs> or stars in the process of being born. Stenja Belisco signing off. Till next time, 73 from ham radio operator W1GV. So long.